Hey guys, fishing and stuff. Today, I got six more fishing hacks for you that you're gonna like. Normally, I do DIYs on my channel. And if you go over to my channel page, I got a long list of DIYs that'll help save you some money. And if you see something that you like, click subscribe and click the bell so that YouTube will notify you when I post videos and you can watch them. Well, let's quit wasting time and let's jump right into these fishing hacks. Fishing hack number one. Everybody knows what chicken livers is. Chicken livers make great bait for catfish. And as a matter of fact, chicken livers make really good bait for hybrids and striped bass. Problem with chicken livers, as you probably know, it's hard to keep on the hook. When I was at the catfish conference, I seen a product that somebody was selling to hold the chicken livers on the hook better. It turns out all it was is tubular gauze. Tubular gauze are gauze that's like a sock. I mean, they're connected all the way around, so the inside's open. These gauze here, they're kind of small. They're for your finger or something. But you can get these tubular gauze in all different sizes. But you can see how they're open, kind of like a tube sock. All you do is roll out as much tubular gauze as you're going to need. You tie one end shut. Then you stick your chicken liver in the other end. You fold it over and you stick your hook through right there because your hook will keep that side shut. After you stick your hook all the way through it, you're ready to go fishing. This actually works a lot better than you would think because those tubular gauze, I mean, that hook won't come out. And the thing about tubular gauze, if you get the bigger sizes, some of the chicken liver will poke out. But it'll work fine just like that. It won't come off the hook and the best part is, it's cheaper than pantyhose. Fishing hack number two. Now everybody knows what this is. This is a chum basket. Actually, it's a brand new chum basket, but I've got a couple like this. I even have a video where I show you how to make your own chum basket using PVC. But when most people think about chumming, they think about catfish. But you can actually chum for all kinds of fish. One of my favorite ways to chum it's the chum for bluegill. You can use bread, or I like to use oatmeal. I buy these little packs of oatmeal. You just open the pack of oatmeal, you pour a little water in it, mix it up, and then it makes it clumpy, and you can throw it easier. But when it hits the water, it breaks up, and the fish like it. I mostly use oatmeal at the end of the summer when the fish aren't biting good, and they starting to get a little hook shy. All it really does is it gets the fish worked up that don't want to bite and it makes it where they'll bite. You can put a little bread on your hook, drop it down there and snatch them right out after you get them hungry. Just make sure you use a very small hook. I like trout hooks personally because they don't have that long shank. This is a great tactic for taking a kid fishing because if you're trying to get a kid interested in fishing, then you better catch some fish. And bluegill are one of my favorite baits for catching big catfish as well. Most people don't think about it, but you could use small bluegill to catch striper too. One of the biggest striper we ever caught from a kayak my wife caught using one of these baits right here that looks just like a little bluegill. But if you do that, you better catch some little bitty bluegill to use. Fishing hack number three. Now we've all got our favorite type fishing line. Everybody uses different stuff and that's cool. Whatever works for you is good. But the thing about fishing line is it's pretty dang expensive. And depending on what size reel you use, they can have pretty high capacity on them. Some reels will have 200 yards of line and other reels will hold 150 yards of line. The thing about it is what do we usually use out of that 200 yards? I mean, 60 yards, 70 yards maybe. So I'm using 60 to 70 yards of line on a 200 yard capacity reel, which means I've got over 100 yards of line on the bottom that's brand new. When my line starts getting a little aged to it and I want to change it, what you can do, you can cut your rig off your rod. I run my line through the guides and then I tie it onto another reel. And I reel it off of the reel that I'm changing onto the other reel, and you're basically flipping your line over. So when you're done, you're using the same line, 
but you flipped it over so the top 100 yards of this line is brand new again. Fishing hack number four. Just in case you don't know what this is, this is a minnow trap. It's got hinges on one side, and it's got a clip that holds it on the other side. Tie a rope to this, you can throw it in the water. Most people put a piece of loaf bread in it, and the bait fish swim in through these holes. But well, once they get inside of it, they swim in through this cone, and when they try to swim back out, they end up going over in the corner, and they're trapped. Nobody ever said fish were smart. But they have a hard time getting back out of it once they get in it. And many traps actually work pretty good, for catching your own minnows if you have a place to do it. You can take a two liter bottle or a juice bottle or something. You can cut the top off. Once you cut the top off, you stick it back in the other way, pop you a couple holes in it and put you some tie straps in it. And you got yourself a minnow trap. And you might want to put a rock in it or something to hold it down and you'll be able to catch minnows just like you do with a real minnow trap. Now after you catch your minnows, I got a cool little video about a bait well I made that you can put your minnows in to keep them alive. Hack number five. On this next hack, I get ideas from you guys all the time and sometimes I can't get to them fast, but I always read them. As far as that goes, if you leave a comment and I don't answer right back, I get a lot of comments. Sometimes one will get lost or I'll miss it, but I do try and reply to everybody. But a guy gave me this idea after the first hack video I ever did. On that video, I made floats out of wine corks. So you don't have much money into it. And I thought it was cool. But one of my subscribers left a comment on that video. And he said he used ping pong balls. So I got me a pack of ping pong balls or table tennis balls. I also found these. And what they are is just practice golf balls, I guess. But they're about the same size, and they're a lot cheaper than ping pong balls. And you're gonna need some kind of coffee stirrer. I got these at Walmart. They're not very expensive. And you're gonna need some super glue. And all you wanna do is drill a hole through the center of your ping pong ball, or your practice golf ball, either one. And after you drill your hole, you run your coffee stirrer through it, then you close up the hole with your super glue because you don't want it to leak. You want it to be buoyant. Try and drill your hole as close to the same size as the coffee stir that you can so that you don't have much to seal up. And last but not least, fishing hack number six. So on this next hack, I got a subscriber. He sent me an email. I thought it was pretty interesting. He said he wraps all of his lead weights with shrink wrap. And the reason he does it is weights hanging on a rod can beat the rod while you're traveling and it'll put chips all in your rod. And it kind of reminded me of a video I did about solid core lead. You use this solid core lead, that's a one pound roll. This is a five pound roll. You could use it for Drifting for catfish, you can use it for steelhead, different things. I wrapped this stuff in shrink wrap and I really liked it. And on that video I did with another YouTuber, I showed how you can wrap it around your rod so it's not swinging and beating against your rod too, for the same reason. Well, I cut me out a couple of pieces of shrink wrap and I figured I'd try it on a couple of weights, see how it worked out. All you gotta do is slide your weight into the shrink wrap. I'm using a heat gun but you can use a cigarette lighter or whatever you want. Shrink the shrink wrap down until it's tight. They actually turned out pretty cool. I mean, I can see to where this is gonna save your rod from getting beat up. And the shrink wrap fits on there really tight, so I doubt it's gonna come off. But this is a neat little hack, but it's something you're gonna to have to do before you go fishing. But still, it's a good way to save your rods from getting tore up. Well, there you have it, six cool fishing hacks, or at least I think they're cool. And I hope you found something useful on it. Hey guys, if you like this video, press that like button. And if you're not subscribed, then what you waiting on? On my video from last week, I had a giveaway, and I said that on this week's video, I'll pick a winner. So I gotta go to my video from last week. I'm gonna copy the link, then go over to the random picker and put it in. Dang, there was over 600 comments on last week's video. But we're going to pick them, and the winner is Arthur Henderson. Congratulations, Arthur. You just won yourself an awesome cutting board. Everything that company makes is awesome, 
and this cutting board's no exception. And like I said last week, go over there and check them out. I'll leave a link in the description box below. Go check them out because they sell all sorts of cool stuff. And if you buy something, remember to leave them a comment. Just put fishing and stuff, and they're going to send you a free decal or some kind of free gift. I'm sure it'll be awesome because everything they got is. Well, congratulations, Arthur. If you'll get in touch with me and give me your address, I'll get that out to you. Hey, guys, as always, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you on the next build.